Okay, um, let, let's go to Abuja very quickly. Our colleague uh, Ajuri has a question for you. Ajuri, go ahead. Yeah, th yeah thank you, Kimba. Uh, Mr. Wazurike, the question I have for you is, in, in view of what has come out recently, you know, the Deputy Senate President Ike Ikwaramadu made a pretty strong statement advocating that the nation must now transition from a presidential system to a parliamentary system. Now, this is somebody who has chaired the Constitution Amendment Committee for many years now as Deputy Senate President, so it carries weight. What I want to ask you about is when we talk about the restructuring calls of many years ago, yeah, you had maybe one or two voices, but in terms of a large-scale move to restructure the country, we're only seeing it today. And as we look forward, if we are to go into a parliamentary system, what is the guarantee that the same political godfathers who have controlled various structures of the nation's political system for their own personal benefit wouldn't then be able to hijack a parliamentary system if they are not if they are in control of the grassroots support taking politicians into various public offices around the country? Well, you know the major difference between presidential system and parliamentary system. Parliamentary system is cheaper. Presidential system is overburdened. But that is not all. Instability is more in the parliamentary system than the presidential system. As it is today, Nigeria has practiced parliamentary. In our own wisdom, we moved into presidential. If tomorrow the call for return to parliamentary system is more, we'll move. That is also restructuring. Then for an experienced legislator, like Deputy Senate President to make that call. I think it's good to look into it. Maybe we can take only a part of that parliamentary and then take a part of presidential. And incidentally, that was our recommendation at the national conference, that we have to reduce the cost of governance. At the same time, have part-time legislators. I know that the issue of part-time legislators will never see the light of day, Why? because it is the National Assembly and all the state legislatures that will turn it into law. It's like asking themselves to say, well, you're a full-time legislator, be a part-time legislator. Of course, it will affect the allowance. They will never approve it. It's like asking Mr. President, come and be a ceremonial president. He will never sign it. So as it is today, his call is going to maybe be considered in future because I know that it's not part of the recommendation of the yeah. current committee, Barista, which is... Barista, Barista, let me come in here uh, quickly, because, you know, you've mentioned the issue of the cost of governance potentially uh, being reduced if we are to make the transition from the presidential system to the parliamentary system. But some would argue that, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's just not enough. Because if, 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 for example, that if you were to make that transition, yes, you might be able to reduce the cost in terms of salaries to aides and, uh, and, and politicians, etc. But if, if the process, some would argue that if the process is not fixed, if we don't shut, if we don't eradicate corruption, that no matter how much money you're making in even the perfect system, it, it takes just a few human beings to steal all the money. So, so the question is, even if you reduce the cost of governance in terms of salaries, what, how, can that now offset the cost of governance when you talk about corruption in this new system? Well, let me tackle this issue of corruption. Most people use it as a campaign mantra, and they really don't practice it. Corruption has never been eliminated in any country. Never has it been eliminated. What makes a difference to one country or another is tolerating corruption. We tolerate corruption if somebody is corrupt and you set up a committee, or as Senator Sani said, you use air freshener for some people, you use insecticide for others. That is what encourages corruption. Corruption takes place in America. Electoral manipulation takes place in America, takes place in Britain, takes place in Nigeria. Russia is even far worse than all these countries. But battling corruption is what we set up agencies like EFCC, like the police. That is their job. So when a person says, 
if we move from this, we'll get this and then corruption will wipe it out. Corruption will always be there. This is why you need a strong and independent judiciary. Do you think, for instance, yes. say, if Mr. President says process rather than corruption, uh, I mean, sorry, process rather than uh, restructuring is the way to get us to that uh, change that we need, do you think that corruption stays in the way of process? Yes, corruption will always stay in the way of process because it will affect the outcome of its ability to steal money. You know, by the way, corruption is not just stealing money. If I get you, make you the MD of a place when you don't merit it, that's an aspect. In any case, I grew up knowing of corruption and nepotism. But these days, people jettison nepotism, talk of corruption. It's not always just stealing. It includes stealing. Now, corruption blocking the way of a process is going to be expected because corruption thrives when it has settled. In other words, restructuring means moving it out of the way, so it must block that process of moving it out of the way. So, Mr. President, process will always be there. Corruption will always block it. But the will of the government of the day is what will triumph when it moves corruption out of the way. If it begins to tolerate corruption in the smallest way, the other aspects of corruption will jump up, which is why many of us are disappointed that the former secretary of the government of the Federation, what has happened to him? Nobody knows. The man is relaxing. While in Osun, they will attack Osun, chief of Osun, they'll go to his house and break it and want to arrest him.